Sarah. Welcome to the It's a Sarah podcast. Today it is Friday, February 24. So this is my February episode number 24. I make daily episodes this whole month. Um, normally I make uh, weekly episodes in which I share my share my weekly handwerk perikelen, my crafty adventures. Um, but in February I will share my daily handwerk perikelen with you. Um, and I'm really enjoying that. Um, today I'm wearing a lot of clothes because uh, it, oh, I was so cold. It is grey and rainy and quite cold today. Normally we um, we have a fireplace in the living room and we make a fire in the evening and then the living room gets really warm and nice and cozy uh, but yesterday evening we were out and the kids were also not at home so uh, we didn't make a fire and um, now it was really cold today and because it's also it, the sun is not shining so there's no warmth from the sun from outside it was very cold and i was sitting and knitting and i forgot to put on an extra woolly layer um to prefer i got cold but <laughs> i forgot that and i when I, I i wasn't thinking i wasn't feeling because when i'm knitting i'm so busy and but when i uh, quit knitting my hands and my body was were so cold so i put on my uh, extra warm woolly layer and that's very nice um, uh, and I hope I will get a bit warmer while talking. I just filmed my Dutch episode so that uh, I'm halfway <laughs> to a good uh, body temperature, I guess. Um, yeah, uh, I, it was my plan to show you my um, ac accessories today. Um, but when I was grabbing them together, uh, I couldn't find one of my favorite shawls. And that's quite um, annoying because um, I'm not really a messy person. Uh, I think I can talk messy and maybe I can and I can do a bit messy. My hair can be messy, but I'm not messy with my stuff. Um, all my crafting stuff is at one place. All my works in pro progress are in one big basket, and also my knitting needles and. Um, uh, oh yeah, I'm now, I'm now, no, this is not about, this is not about the shell. I also couldn't find my needle points, three millimeter needle points uh, this morning. A friend was asking, can I borrow, uh, do you have uh, three millimeter needles extra and can I borrow them for you, from you? Because I ordered them, but they aren't delivered and I want to start my knitting now. And I, of course, I can understand she needs them. So, so I was looking for her, but I, but I couldn't find my three millimeter needles and I didn't understand because as far as I know, I'm not knitting a, a project on three millimeter needles. So I was thinking and all my projects are together in a big basket and I was checking all the project bags. Nothing. So I don't understand. There's no place that it could be. No other place that it could be. So it's quite weird. And then I want to uh, pick, uh, grab all my shawls and all the things and I also lost my shawl, one of my favorite shawls. I have two I wear outside and I alternate them a bit and I, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I always put them on the, oh, there's a word again, <laughs> uh, in the, in the, in the hall, do you call it hall also? When you when you enter your house through the front door, we have a little space, we call it hall. And there is a, where you put your coats and your shawls on. My husband made, we have a long, small hall. And my husband put a, a big, a, a long, small wooden uh, piece of wood uh, against the wall. Uh, and there are all these little hooks. It's a bit like a school class, uh, before a school class. They also, where all the children can put their coats and their bags on. We have that in our house too. <laughs> because we were, we are with five persons in this house and we have coats and bags and everything. And um, when it's all put together, it's a big mess and you have to put it away to find your own thing. And we didn't like that. So we make a very, very wide one and, and with, I guess, 20 hooks. So there's lots of space and everybody can put their stuff on. And that's where I 
hang my shawl also. In Dutch we call that thing a kapstok. That thing that you can put your coats and shawls and whatever and, and, and backpacks on. But I um, don't know the English word. A kapstok. <laughs> uh, but my shawl wasn't there and it wasn't... I, I can't find it anywhere in the house. And that's that never happens to me. I'm quite good at keeping track of my stuff and when I for a minute can, can't find my keys or whatever or my phone or, or the, 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 the thing where I put my phone in I always go back to the moment when I was sure I had it and then I go to that point and then I am oh yes they are there and I'm very good at it and I never lost uh, lose stuff for a long time but now both the needle tips and the, the shawl, they are not together, they have no connection, they are not... Uh, I can't find them. So for my shawl the only thing I couldn't, that I could think of was that it's in the car. I, I got away with a car, with our car a few days ago. And the only thing I, I can I can imagine I put it off? I don't know. I never put my shawl off. But but the car is uh, not at home. It's uh, uh, it's with my husband <laughs> on another place. So so um, he's at home uh, in the uh, at the evening at the end of the day. So um, I couldn't wait for it to show you all my favorite shawls because it was it was definitely it is definitely one of my favorite shawls. So I will um, search for my shawl, I keep searching and I will share it when I found it. But I don't know what life wants to tell me, because I all, all, all my stuff got lost. What, what, is, what am I not seeing? What am I not getting? So that's quite interesting. We shall see. Um, but I did film quite a big part of me making uh, a swatch. Um, I told you yesterday I had to confess that I um, broke my own rule by not uh, getting new patterns in uh, 2023 and I also broke my own rule by not um, uh, replying for a test knit in 2023 because I'm a bad test knitter but um, I broke both rules. I didn't buy yarn, I didn't buy yarn. Uh, I was swatching with all kind of yarns to, to see what was the good yarn for that project and I filmed it. So I will put it um, after my chatting now and I will uh, uh, explain you uh, what I am doing and um, how uh, what uh, the end result was. So, and uh, the other things I want to show you, I have my little yarn ends um, for my sweater here. Um, I ripped it out yesterday, um, um, my uh, Superwash Merino anchor, swe anchor sweater by Petite Knit. I want it to be cropped, so um, I ripped out the ribbing and 20 rows and then I attached uh, a another leftover that wasn't crinkled. But I, I also had used quite some for a, a crochet cushion, a crochet, pi <coughs> a crochet pillow <coughs> which I made a few weeks ago. So it was not enough for the whole uh, new uh, ribbing. Um, so uh, I did. Um, I had to use also this uh, crinkled yarn. And um, when I did that with my Sparky, the ribbing was quite wobbly because you can see this. This is so wobbly. This is so crinkly. It's quite fascinating how strong the the yarn. Oh, here it's less. Oh, that's also maybe it's because it's heavier. Here's more strong than there. Oh, that's quite interesting. That's the Zwaartekracht. The, the, the power to, to, to put the things to earth. I also don't know. Forge, forge? I don't know the word. Um, but um, I, uh, I uh, have to knit eight rows and then I'm done. So um, I don't know if I will be able to finish it today. I have another night out and I really love it. It's really nice now, not really nice night out, but I'm also glad I have a quiet weekend <laughs> with not too much plans because I miss my knitting time. But I will finish this sweater tomorrow, I guess. And also my Felix cardigan is lying in front, laying, lying in front of me. It's almost uh, dry, so next week I will have two new garments, and that's nice. The other thing I want to tell you about is my granny square blanket. I made a decision about the colors. Um, <clears throat> uh, 
a few days ago, I this will be a, a bed uh, a bed spread, a, a spray, a granny square spray for my parents-in-law, and I was um, uh, um, I was not sure about the colors. I did start with a very bright, busy colored one with one new color every row, and then I uh, crocheted nine rows, and the tenth was white. But the, the colors weren't matching and it was too busy. So I wanted to, to make a bit of a calmer color uh, combination. So I choose three colors and um, uh, it was my plan to do four, three, two rows of each color. And four was okay, but three wasn't, I wasn't feeling three. I, when I crocheted two rows with um, the second color, it, I, I felt it's enough. And then I crocheted, I did crochet um, two colors also with the third color, but it was not feeling okay and I wasn't sure what to do with it. So next square I tried and I decided that one row is enough. So uh, instead of nine rows, these are squares of uh, seven rows and the eighth round, the eighth row is the white color. And I did consider um, doing these rows twice so twice um uh, two uh, white rounds uh, for uh, bigger squares and also a, a, to add a bit of calm uh, but i wasn't sure i uh, i i'm quite sure i have way enough of that yarn but i i don't know i i thought one is okay so i did and i'm uh, yeah i'm i'm um I'm okay. I'm. I. It's feeling good. I'm tevreden with it. I'm uh, um, satisfied. No, I don't know what's the word. But uh, but, but it's uh, it's feeling okay. But uh, I didn't add the square today's square because when I had laying them together, I thought no, these um, must not be next to each other. And I was looking why I was feeling it, and I was looking why aren't they good to next to each other? And then I saw that they both had as a first color a, a, a quite a light color. The contrast between these first colors isn't big enough, I guess. Um, <clears throat> so I decided uh, to uh, make another square. I picked already picked the color for tomorrow with a little more brighter uh, first color, and and then it matches better, I guess. So it's quite nice to um, to play with colors and uh, to listen to your feeling and and it's still when you make um, a, a, a scrappy project then um, it's always a challenge. Um, sometimes I just do something and and don't look and don't uh, yeah just do and and be okay with the not matching color combinations and I. Um, the more busy it is, the better it is. But uh, with this one, um, I don't think you. W when these were together, nobody would see it. When the when the when the blanket is finished, it it was such a detail. But um, uh, yeah, I I don't know. It's a good practice in feeling my uh, heart <laughs> and um, uh, feeling that no, that that doesn't belong there, and and then be okay with that. And uh, yeah. Without um, without uh, perfectionism, uh, that isn't working for you. Because when um, when I have a quite a good perfectionist inside of me, and when um, it's always I love her, I love her too. She is really uh, serving me now and then, but not when I'm making a scrappy blanket. Then I don't need her <laughs> because then it's not fun anymore. When my perfectionist um, gets involved by my scrappy projects, <laughs> it is she gets stressed about all the things, all the color combinations that couldn't work out, and and um, uh, she wants to control it. And um, one of the most fun th things of a scrappy project is uh, you don't have to control it; just let it happen. So um, uh, I really can use my perfectionist by other things um, and I ask her for, her for her help and sometimes she offers her help without uh, 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 asking me. <laughs> but um, 
uh, maybe it's a good advice for you. Don't invite your perfectionist when you are making a scrappy blanket or a scrappy project. Just tell her uh, to do uh, some other things, <laughs> but uh, um, uh, she doesn't need to be involved. Okay. Um, yeah, I will. Uh, I will go uh, with you to my uh, uh, to my swatching. I I don't know if we are going that side, but <laughs> it feels natural to uh, to go that side. Um, I will take you with me when I'm sitting on my kitchen, no, not on, at my kitchen table. I always have said, say I'm sitting on my table, but I'm a very, I think in images, just when I'm saying that, I see myself sitting on my table and that's quite weird because <laughs> I never sit on my table, not knitting and drinking coffee, no, I'm on the bench at my table or on the chair at my table, but not on the table and every time I say that, um, uh, I see that uh, picture in my head and that's quite funny because it's so weird <laughs> so but I can keep saying it I don't know why um, but I uh, you can see me sitting at my table and I'm drinking coffee and I'm a bit of chatting with my uh, youngest girl she's also in the living room but you can't hear it because the sound is on uh, of and uh, I'm I'm uh, swatching, and I'm not a big swatcher, but um, I was really um, uh, searching for the right uh, yarn for this project, and uh, I definitely had to swatch. And I'm glad I did it because um, uh, otherwise uh, I would have cast on all the stitches, and then uh, saw after after quite some knitting that it didn't work out what I had planned. <laughs> so that's uh, that's quite interesting. Okay, let's go to there. <laughs> bye bye. So here I am drinking my cup of coffee and also uh, knitting a bit on my swatch for my test knit. Yes, I uh, have a confession to make. Um, 2023 would be the year um, in which I didn't uh, want to collect new patterns. It was not espe especially about the buying. It was not about saving money, but more creating space um, uh, to make all the lovely things I have in my Ravelry library, but also in my books. And um, uh, I never get to them because there are always new things. And um, uh, that was okay for quite a while. But um, uh, a few months ago, I really was bothered by uh, by all the debt collecting and um, yeah it uh, it seems nice to me to just uh, enjoy what I have but <laughs> a few weeks ago I saw a pattern um, which I couldn't ignore <laughs> at first it was not uh, really touching me although uh, when I, I let, let me first start uh, with telling which pattern I'm talking about. Maybe you did recognize the stitch pattern, but it is the uh, corn cardigan from Rebecca. The Crea Bea podcast uh, is from her, and um, she started designing last year. And I really love her designs. Yesterday I showed you my cur sweater um, I have from her. It is very lovely. I also have the Oh, how does it call the Cargill sweater? I'm not sure. But I really love her designs. I love all of them. I didn't buy all of them. And I wouldn't buy new designs from her this year. But when I saw this Corin cardigan, I could only think I need that cardigan in my summer wardrobe. Um, and it was um, uh, when she posted... Um, her call for test knitters. It was that picture with those two versions from her and also little videos of Rebecca herself wearing her cardigans that really stole my heart. <laughs> At that moment I, uh, I, I, I couldn't get myself uh, into my own promises and I just uh, replied for the test knit within one second. <laughs> 
And immediately after that, I felt, oh, what am I doing? I, I shouldn't do this. And then I um, uh, texted uh, Rebecca. Oh, hi, I, uh, I replied for your test knit. But when you uh, don't pick me, it's not a problem because uh, I, uh, I um, had uh, some appointments with myself. <laughs> so that's absolutely OK. But I think she did, didn't read my co my message or maybe she just thought, uh, yeah, Sarah, <laughs> helaas pindakaas, we say in the Netherlands. Um, but a few days later, um, I got an email that I uh, was allowed to test knit uh, her cardigan. And of course, uh, it really made, made me happy. Um, and here you see me um, casting on some stitches for a swatch with the yarn I had in mind. Uh, it's actually quite a thin yarn. It is a sport weight uh, cotton yarn, Katia Memphis, 100% uh, cotton. And um, uh, it doesn't have this, that shine that cotton yarns often have. I do not prefer, prefer the shiny cotton. Um, uh, I, in Dutch we say mat. I love it without a shine. I love it mat. Muted? No, I don't know. I don't know the English word. Doesn't matter. Um, but um, I didn't uh, uh, look at the yard age, so I uh, had no idea in which uh, yarn she knitted it. And um, when I uh, uh, got the information for the test knit, I saw that it was uh, knitted in DK or worsted yarn. And this is sport weight cotton yarn. And I thought, oh, maybe I can make something. Uh, about it but <laughs> that didn't work out um, so I swatched with another cotton yarn in my stash you can see it uh, in the right bottom um, th that's lovely brown it is also 100% cotton yarn I do not know the brand because I bought it last summer and it was an unknown brand to me I do have the label but um, it's not the label you see at the left that's from the Katia yarn but I wasn't very happy about the stitch definition. So um, here I'm trying uh, to swatch with um, the Katia yarn held double. Um, I'm a very loose knitter, so I had to go down one needle size. I went down to a four millimeter uh, needle size and um, I got a gauge with that one. But it, um, yeah, I didn't, I, I, I do not really know. It wasn't making me very happy. Here I'm tangled again. Story of my life. <laughs> my little yarn tail. Um, I always make a bow in it. Um, and I was trying that here, but uh, I got tangled again. <laughs> As you can see, my uh, swatch has grown quite a bit. Uh, it goes quite quickly with uh, uh, this yarn held double. It is also a quick knit and it's a very lovely lace pattern, a very easy peasy lace pattern. And uh, I really love knitting it. Um, uh, I, I had to change my uh, way of purling because um, you knit the cardigan back and forth. Oh, I. I don't know if I t told already, but I replied for the short sleeved V-neck version. This cardigan comes in several uh, versions. 
uh, you uh, can choose long sleeves or short sleeves and a round neck or a v-neck and uh, she um, uh, search testers for all kind of uh, models so um, I replied for a short sleeved version with a v-neck and uh, because it, it, it seems as the perfect layer for summer when I'm only wearing a tank top and I really want an open airy light cardigan only the cotton and especially when held double doesn't feel really light weighted it feels quite heavy and yeah I don't know about the stitch definition I, I had to change my way of purling uh, because I do a Russian pearl continental and um, then your stitch uh, get twisted, stitches get twisted so uh, you have to insert your needle at in the back uh, leg of, uh, uh, of, the, uh, st uh, of the stitch and that's uh, no problem to me but um, in this pattern you have to knit two together um, very often and then uh, of those two stitches um, every time one uh, had a twisted leg and one not um, when they both would have a twisted leg it was not really a problem because I could insert my needle otherwise but but when one is is uh, right and the other not, other one is not then it's more difficult so I decided I would do my regular purling uh, regular continental purling uh, but that's a bit looser, so I changed my needle tip. I um, my uh, the needle which I knit the wrong side with. I changed to uh, a three point seventy five millimeter, and yeah, I was curious if that made my stitches neater or tighter because I thought it was quite uh, a bit too loose. Although I got gauge, I got gauge, but I I didn't love the look. Here I'm measuring my swatch. I made a cupboard, a cupboard. I think that's the word for the paper thing. A, no, a cardboard, a cardboard um, swatchy thing. Uh, I made it my own and it works perfect. So I am counting my stitches and I really get gauge. So that was perfect. But I, you can see at my face, I'm, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not happy with the with the result. I'm thinking, oh. Should I see a cardigan, a whole cardigan in this stitch for me? Can I make it? Would I love it? I don't know. And I'm changing my other needle point, um, that, uh, which I knit the right side with, a 4mm needle. I changed it to uh, a 3.75 also to get a little bit tighter gauge, maybe be a bit off gauge but tighter stitches but I can tell you already Sarah Sarah it won't work it won't work <laughs> maybe you can save some time and listen to me it won't work Now, I'm not listening to myself as usual, but here I see that it didn't work out and I uh, am going to my yarn stash. Um, uh, you can't see it, but you all know how it looks now. So uh, I'm standing on the shelves and searching through all my nice, wo nice woolly yarns and I will come back with two packages of yarn, uh, one merino yarn and one um, uh, cotton yarn blend in which I already swatched for the current cardigan. Yeah, that's my merino in the right, at the right. And here I'm picking out the swatch I made earlier this week. This is a cotton wool blend. No, no not a blend, a cotton wool mix. And I really love the swatch in that yarn, but I, I was a bit considered about the warmth. Um, because it's quite woolly, it's more wool than cotton. 
Um, I was a bit afraid it would be too warm on a hot summer day when I uh, want to put on. So uh, I put it away, but because I was not uh, satisfied with the result of my cotton swatches, I picked it up again and here I'm thinking. And I also picked up the merino yarn because I, I thought merino is nice, can be nice in summer too. Um, but I forget my merino yarn right now, I see, because I'm absolutely pleased by the look of, of the stitches in that uh, dark brown yarn. It's also such a nice color. I made a vest, oh no, no, sorry, not a vest. I made a cardigan in uh, that yarn years ago. Uh, I crocheted a cardigan. Uh, but the yarn was very pilly, the cardigan gets quite pilled and I uh, brought it to the thrift store and I... Why did I do that? <laughs> I ask myself a lot. I didn't have a deep pillar by then. And I thought that it was just too bad, it would never will be better and I don't know if it would be, but I didn't even give it a try. I just thrown it away, brought it to the thrift store, and it was one of my favorite cardigans. I'm now and then my declutter modus is is um drived by by hormones, I guess. <laughs> I'm not I did not often declutter things I really regret, but <laughs> but the cardigan uh, I do regret. But uh, I have enough yarn of this uh I have enough of this yarn for making a new cardigan, so I'm uh, I'm curious if if knitted fabric will be pilling as much as crochet fabric. I have no idea. Now I've knitted a few rows um, on my swatch, um, I really need to go down one needle size, so I knit it with 4mm needles, but I'm really quite, uh, I'm really a loose knitter, so that uh, doesn't surprise me. Um, but here I'm looking and uh, I'm, uh, I'm swatching, I'm measuring again and it, uh, it's, it's perfect, it's perfect this way, I get gauge. My heart makes a jump of the result, so um, I think we have a winner, <laughs> an unexpected winner. I'm not quite sure if I like the, this cardigan with short sleeves, but um, I can always knit one sleeve and um, maybe uh, wear long, sh long black sleeves under it, it's okay. And uh, if I do want to have it long sleeves, then I can always uh, add them um, afterwards when the test knit is over. So this it will be. Um, I will show you some close-ups of my uh, swatches and um, I will clean up this mess and I will see you tomorrow. Bye bye!